What was done cannot be undone. But we can end the silence. We can stop turning our heads away. We can look at you in the eye and finally say on behalf of the American people, what the United States government did was shameful. And I am sorry. At the Atlanta Cotton Exposition in 1895, Booker T. Washington drew the attention of Northern philanthropists with his speeches stressing the need for economic development in black communities. As a result, Julius Rosenwald, the president of Sears and Roebuck and Company, was inspired to reach out to African American communities in Tuskegee, Alabama. Studies underwritten by the Rosenwald Fund revealed that disease and poor health were obstacles to development in Tuskegee which ultimately led to a series of health initiatives against hookworm, pellagra, and eventually syphilis. Syphilis is a deadly venereal disease that, if left untreated, can result in deep skin lesions, heart disease, bone deformities, blindness, paralysis, and dementia. Early treatment for the spirochete bacterium that causes syphilis included mercury, bismuth, and later arsenic. These treatments were typically ineffective, often dangerous, and sometimes fatal. Launched by the U.S. Public Health Service, PHS, in the 1930s, the Tuskegee study began as a health initiative to reduce venereal diseases in the rural South. The Rosenwald Fund financed a two-year demonstration project and discovered the majority of Macon County residents were poor African Americans with little or no medical care, and that almost half of them were syphilitic. In 1929, the stock market crash and the ensuing Great Depression forced the Rosenwald Fund to withdraw its support for a follow-up project. Three years later, the PHS launched the Tuskegee Study of Untreated Syphilis in the Negro Male and began recruiting test subjects ages 25 to 40 from the surrounding area. You don't intend on telling them they have syphilis, do you? Well, if they have it, we'll have to tell them something, won't we? Well, maybe we better not use a word they never heard before. That just scare them off, Doctor. Told they were receiving free treatment for bad blood, a generic term used at the time for many different diseases, approximately 400 syphilitic and 200 non-syphilitic African American males underwent blood tests and later painful spinal taps. Eunice Rivers, an African American PHS nurse assigned to monitor the Tuskegee study, soon became a key figure because she was trusted by the subjects and ensured the cooperation. Although she knew the true intent of the study, she did not inform the men, convinced that they were better off because of the other medical care they were receiving. These subjects were never told that they had syphilis. In fact, the researchers did everything within their power to prevent participants from discovering they had the disease. During World War II, the PHS purposely excluded patients from the draft to prevent them from learning about their syphilitic status during medical examinations. Treatment was withheld from infected subjects even after penicillin was proven to be a safe and effective treatment for syphilis in 1943. Excuse me, nurse, we're here to get this man a penicillin shot. Name? Name. Uh, Willie. Willie Johnson. Can't help you. How you doing? Why not? Name's on the list. <clears throat> what list is that, ma'am? Tuskegee study. No penicillin allowed. How come I can't get a shot like Caleb got a shot? I, won't, I mean, I can't. Never mind, Willie. Come on, we just go somewhere else. Won't help. They sent the list to everybody. In 1966, Henry Beecher published an article in the New England Journal of Medicine exposing corrupt medical studies, drawing attention to the unethical procedures used in many medical experiments. 
The Centers for Disease Control, CDC, organized a review panel to investigate the Tuskegee study in 1969, but the unethical nature of the experiment was ignored and its continuation was recommended. In 1972, Dr. Peter Buxton disclosed the Tuskegee study to the Associated Press. Buxton's story was sent to major newspapers across the country, including the New York Times, sparking widespread public outrage and leading to the termination of the Tuskegee study in 1972. After the Tuskegee study was unveiled, there was an increase in scrutiny of research involving human subjects. As part of the National Research Act of 1974, Congress set up the National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects of Biomedical and Behavioral Research. In 1979, the Belmont Report was published, which outlined three key principles that should be observed when conducting human subjects research. Respect for persons, beneficence, and justice. Respect for persons demands that no information be withheld from subjects, and that they must give informed consent to participate in any study. Beneficence ensures that subjects are treated in an ethical manner, that respects their decisions, and promotes their well-being. Justice requires that all participants be treated equally, no matter their race or gender. It made it mandatory that patients had to have informed consent before participating in any study. The National Research Act and the Belmont Report prevent researchers from taking advantage of subjects and ensure the protection and equal treatment of participants. Institutional review boards were also created at medical schools and universities to evaluate scientific studies and reduce the chances that an experiment like the Tuskegee study would ever happen again. The other part that was very important from the Tuskegee study was the importance of having an independent review board, often now called an institutional review board, where an independent group not involved in the research has to make sure that the human subjects are protected from the potential harmful effects of the research study. That committee is going to review the research, make sure that it's uh, scientifically valid, I'm going to make sure that the rights and the welfare of human subjects are being protected, and all the risks that are identified are going to be minimized. Although these measures improved the conduct of human subjects research, they did not repair the relationship between African Americans and the healthcare system. Institutions and uh, physicians and other researchers uh, have to work a lot harder uh, in order to convince uh, African American patients or any minority uh, group to want to participate in research. I think the Tuskegee study has had a profound effect upon how African Americans interact with healthcare providers in the United States, probably particularly older patients and patients in the parts of the United States and the South. Um, I think it has led to distrust of healthcare in general, and particularly distrust of clinical trials with respect to the belief that clinical trials are experiments that could potentially be harmful. And I think that largely is a legacy of the Tuskegee experiment. In 1973, Fred D. Gray, a civil rights attorney, filed a $1.8 billion class action lawsuit with the help of Cecilia Foote, a widow of a Tuskegee victim, and Bill Williams, a survivor. In response, the government agreed to pay $10 million in reparations to the subjects and their spouses. In 1997, the Legacy Committee was established to persuade Bill Clinton to apologize to the men and families affected by the Tuskegee study. President Clinton made the formal apology on behalf of the federal government. The project denied treatment to men with syphilis, and the president says their lives were trampled on. The Tuskegee study was a tragic and scarring episode in African American history, a shameful piece of Southern history, and a lasting blemish on biomedical research. The study publicly highlighted the unjust treatment of African Americans, led to the creation of codes and regulations for human subjects research, and shattered their relationship between African Americans, medical professionals, and the healthcare system. The Tuskegee study may have revealed a large amount of important information about the effects of untreated syphilis, but was it worth taking advantage of the participants and leading them to their deaths in the name of science?